even though we are trying to be as side on as possible but making sure we are not overtly side on and kind of a little open so we can see the board the most important part is the down swing you cock your wrist it gets it becomes easier to get on top of the bounce whether you're playing a cut or a pull shot the whole idea of balance is making sure your head which is the heaviest part of your body is within the base we want that back face to be acute so that even if you don't hit it on the middle of the bat because of the bat angle it will not carry to silly point or short leg so keep that body close you know it's it's so much like baseball you see in a baseball batter they don't open up when they hit those uh, huge uh, home runs they keep it nice and side on <music> Cricket Life Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Again on the channel, we're joined by Deep Dasgupta. Deep, how's it all going? Oh, not too bad and, and good to be back again with you, Neil. And uh, enjoyed the last time around. I'm sure we're going to do that again this time. So we're in Reading in the UK. You're going to give us a little batting masterclass, some technical tips for a lot of young players and experienced, as, experienced players as well who are looking to improve their game. Before we get into it, do you want to talk through your main coaching philosophies etc yeah uh, i guess i'm one I'm, I'm quite passionate about coaching and uh, i see coaching as as a mixture of science and art at times we get too uh, caught into the science side of coaching uh, and kind of neglect the art which is like letting an individual be trying to figure out uh, the natural without spoiling the natural flair of an individual how we can improve an individual uh, so yeah i mean trying to keep the natural flair as much as possible and, and helping uh, players out. I guess that's something that, that I think uh, I, I want to do. Obviously, you're a former Indian international, you've been in amongst some of the greats of our game. What kind of things rubbed off on you, <laughs> mixing with the likes? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can name oh, them no. all, but uh, Sachin, yeah. Saurav, etc. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, I'm extremely blessed that. Uh, I got an opportunity and the honor of playing along with these people and also again some some really really big names like Brian Lara and Pollock and, and you know Jack Callis and all of these guys so yeah I mean I'm, I'm kind of blessed that way but yeah I mean it's, uh, it's it's been a great learning experience and and that's the reason I think and I encourage everyone to go and pick up a sport it doesn't have to be only cricket any sport because the field, the sports field itself teaches you so much and it teaches you, according to me, more uh, than what any classroom can ever do. The life lessons that I've learned on, uh, on, on a cricketing field uh, are, are, are invaluable. I, mean, there, I don't think there would be any course or any class that could have taught me as much. And the art of building in innings, a big innings, you've also got a test hundred as well. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's about habit, isn't it? It's it's about having, uh, it's it's about habit, and also understanding that a longer innings, playing a longer innings, would have its own ebbs and flows, and understanding how to handle different situation. For example, uh, in a in a longer format, if you get a, you get a hundred and let's say 120, 130 ball balls in this day and age, in our times it would be more like 170, 200. Uh, but yeah, we're talking about 130, 40, but in those 100, 130, 140 deliveries, there'll be times when you're not at your 100%, whether it's concentration or your body, your mind, you might be off a bit. How do you get through those periods? And obviously there'll be a period where you, you're feeling really great and you're quickly getting 20, 25 runs and uh, you, you know, you're feeling good, maybe at times overconfident and you think you can get away with, with, uh, 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 with murder, so to say. But so just to understand, uh, you know, the ebbs and flows of a longish innings and, and having that maturity and, and that would only come with habit, doing it over and over again, uh, batting for long periods, whether it's the nets uh, or it's, a, it's games or anything. But so, yeah, it's, it's about habit, to be honest. And then you've also got your own cricket academy as well. We'll put all the links in the description below of this video. So whoever is watching it, yeah. please do check it out. But yeah, want to give yeah, a little I, plug? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, all of you out there, I mean, this is an online academy. This is more than a physical thing, which, uh, which I thought, you know, at, at times I, I used to get a lot of these videos from very different parts of, 
of the world, to be honest, and uh, people sending me videos of their kids and all. And I thought about it, it's like, yeah, if, why not try and do that in a more structured way? So now I have uh, a website called ddg-academy.com, which is ddg-academy.com, and where, you know, you can send me your videos. I is a friend of mine uh, who runs a lovely company who's helped me uh, create this, uh, this page. Uh, the company's name is called Rebull. Uh, they're into coaching tools and coaching software, so they helped me build this uh, uh, site where you know I can see that those videos through a coaching tool, and I can help you suggest you uh, you know any changes that you need to make or or ideas uh, regarding your batting, bowling, or keeping. So yeah, so keep sending those videos. It's a fantastic system. Link in the description below. But for now, deep. Can't wait mm -hmm. to get into this batting masterclass. Let's yep. go. Let's go. Right, let's just start with the grip and the stance. So grip, it's very simple. Uh, it's old school, very old school. So just put the bat down on the floor, pick it up. And that's roughly, roughly your, your grip. Uh, a lot of kids nowadays I see, they, they turn their wrist around, the top grip around a bit. What that happens, what happens with that is then you're kind of locked. You're very good on the onside but then through the offside, you get a little bit locked with your top hand. So I'd say, turn it around a bit. Again, the other thing to look at is, is your V, the top hand V is in line with the outside edge and your bottom hand V is kind of between the splice and the outside edge. So roughly that's the grip. Uh, ideally, both the hands together, somewhere in the middle of the handle, I've seen a lot of batters with a split grip. Uh, the only problem with that is you tend to use your bottom hand a lot more. It's very difficult to control, especially when you're playing bigger shots. Um, yeah, and, and uh, you know, someone like Bradman had a split grip. But then what helps with that split grip, it helps you to maneuver the bat a lot better. You have more control. But ideally speaking, both the hands together, somewhere in the middle of the handle, and that's the grip. As far as stance is concerned, as far as stance is concerned, generally you you take your leg stump guard or a middle stump, depending on um, what your batting style is and what your game plan is. Uh, the big challenge is to find out the distance between your legs. So roughly speaking, shoulder width, but bottom line, the most important part is what makes you comfortable. If you're comfortable with that kind of a distance, it's fine. If it's more comfortable wider, it's fine. So what the bottom line is this, the wider, your stance is more than your shoulder length. It'll give you a good solid base, but that will hinder your movement. You won't be able to move that well. If it's narrow, then obviously your mobility will increase, but then you don't have a strong base. So ideally speaking, somewhere in between shoulder width apart, strong base, uh, and, and that's your stance. So the other important thing is, it is a side-on game. Cricket is a side-on game. So you try and be as side-on as possible, but just make sure you're not overtly side-on because end of the day, we've got two eyes. We need to look at the ball with both our eyes. So even though we are trying to be as side-on as possible, but making sure we are not overtly side-on and kind of a little open so we can see the ball with both our eyes and the ball are running in with both our eyes. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of people who, who uh, have a little bit of an open stance. That's got to do with a couple of things, how much the front foot move, with it, does it go across or not, or if it's going too much across, so you have an open stance. But having said that, for a right-hand batter against a left-arm seamer coming over the wicket, it also makes sense to open up a bit so that you are in line with the bowler, not with the stumps. So in line with the bowler, left-arm seamer over the wicket, just to open up a little bit. And in the stance, what a lot of players do, batters do, is when they're asked to bend, they bend from their back. Right? And what happens when you bend from your back is your head falls over. It's very, very important that your head is straight because one, your eye line's got to be at the same uh, level because once your head falls, obviously your left eye is, is higher than your right eye, so you need to get that in level. Secondly, if your head falls over, head being furthest from the ground, and also the heaviest part of the body, wherever the head goes, the foot will follow. So if the head falls over, chances are you'll follow it with your front foot as well and then you'll be playing everything across. So it's very, very important to keep your head straight within the base and 
and also when you ask to bend you bend with your knees not with your back because if you bend with your back your head will fall so when you ask to bend bend with your knees and that's predominantly it side on but not overtly side on uh, generally the grip the bottom hand we splice or between the splice and the outside edge top hand we along uh, the outside edge hands together that's about it that's with the grip the stance and uh, you know how much you need to uh, keep your feet apart and stuff like that trigger movement well uh, trigger movement there most of the batters you'll see nowadays they have a trigger movement but do i encourage a young kid 11 12 year old starting to play the sport uh, i wouldn't encourage them to have a trigger movement because the whole idea of the trigger movement is especially when you're playing against quick bowlers you get your body into motion so your body is is ready to move when the ball is delivered so obviously there are different kinds of trigger movements one is obviously the front foot press which is very common and especially used to be very common uh, 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 in the subcontinent, you still see a lot of subcontinental batters. They go like front foot press. The other is back and across. Then there's, uh, there's something called the second stance where you actually walk right across. Uh, one of the best players to do that was obviously Kevin Peterson. He would you know, walk right across with both his feet. So there are different, uh, 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 different trigger movements, but it boils down to what suits you, what comes naturally to you, uh, to get your body moving uh, to play the delivery. So, but the most important part is the couple of things. One, that trigger movement has to kind of finish before the ball is delivered. Because if you're still moving after the ball is delivered, you're still in the process of finishing a trigger movement, you'll be too late to react to the ball. So for example, if you have a front foot press and you're late and that front foot press happens after the ball is delivered, when you're especially playing the quicker bowlers, you've got nowhere else to go. So more often than not, you're hurried and you play from where you are. So there is not much footwork because you don't have the time. Uh, the other important thing is trigger movement should be as small as possible because bigger the trigger movement, chances of you being late and your head falling over and other things happening will be more. So just make sure it's nice and small and, and subtle, not jerky movements, not big movements. And also making sure your head stays as still as possible because it's very, very important. Our eyes are like cameras. So if the camera is moving around, chances are the picture is not that clear. So even if it's front foot press or back and across, or a second stance or whatever it is, just make sure it's predominantly lower body, not much of the upper body. Because I've seen a lot of players, they actually, when they go across or, or whatever their trigger movement is, they go with their head. So making sure your head does not move or moves very, very little, most of that movement is from your lower body, is from your lower body. Uh, that's, these are the two very, very important things that you gotta keep in mind if you have a trigger movement. Make sure it's done before the ball is delivered, so you have the time to move after. And secondly, making sure your head doesn't move, it's predominantly your lower body, which gets your body into motion. Bad pickup. Well, um, you know, I'm not a big believer of the pickup. One of the, obviously, you want it to be as straight as possible, not very straight though, because the arc of the bat, it's, it's a funny thing, it's never straight up and straight down there'll be a bit of an arc so it goes wide and it comes from inside so if you think it's straight up and straight down it generally is not more often than not there is a little bit of an arc a little bit of a uh, uh, a circle which happens there so it goes up in a certain uh, uh, direction and it comes down from a little bit inside from there uh, so i'm not a big fan of how wide the pickup is it can be from here here but the most important part is the downswing. The upswing is still all right, is manageable, but if the downswing is, is as wide as that, then obviously that creates a bit of a gap between bat and pad and you'll be more often than not onside player. And to play on the offside, you have to move your bat around and play through the offside. So the downswing is important. The downswing has to be straight. The upswing, yeah, it can be wide. It can be why that's not a problem, but make sure it's not too straight because if it's too straight, 
chances are the downswing would be from inside and then it's a problem to play deliveries which are straight or on the onside. Chances of leg before increases manifold. Uh, so that's that. The other thing in the pickup is that what we were told for, uh, for a very long time is a little bit of a uh, cocking of the wrist that helps to play horizontal back shots, pull, cut. Uh, if you don't cock your wrist, if it's really straight, you, it's very difficult to get your bat on top of the bounce. So if you cock your wrist, it, gets, it becomes easier to get on top of the bounce, whether you're playing a cut or a pull shot. So if it's possible, it's great. It's not mandatory. If, it, if you can't cock your wrist like that, it's fine. But you do a couple of things. Like I said, one, you, it, uh, it helps to get on top of the bounce. And secondly, you get more power as well. So you bend all your levers. And then at the point of impact, all those levers, they straighten. So that will give it more force into that shot. So pickup wise be careful with the downswing upswing is manageable but downswing has to be straight down well playing a quick bowler well there are quite a few things uh, that you got to keep in mind number one obviously we spoke about the trigger movement just make sure that you finish with whatever trigger movement you have whether it's front foot press or back and across whatever it is you finish before the ball is delivered so it's very important in your mind, you practice the trigger movement as soon as you see your bowler because every bowler has a different action. Somebody would have a bigger jump, somebody wouldn't have a jump. So just make sure while you're there, the non-strikers and especially, you kind of figure that out when do you start with your trigger movement, making sure you finish it before the ball is delivered. The other important thing, especially against quick bowlers, when the bowler's running in, Let's say the bowler's got a longish run up, 15, 20 yards. I've seen a lot of batters who start focusing as soon as the bowler starts running uh, from the top of his mark. And what happens is our concentration span is very, very short. So once the bowler starts and you're 100% focusing on the ball, chances are by the time he reaches or he delivers, you're, you've lost your 100%, 100% concentration. So for that, what you can do is, yes, you're there, you're ready for the bowler when he starts running, but you're not, let's say, 100%, you're like 95, 90%. But just before he reaches his delivery side, that's when, and you can kind of align it with your trigger movement, that's when you get 100% ready. That's when you're like, you know, you're absolutely ready to face the ball. So a lot of players I've seen who get ready right at the top, when the bowler is starting to run and what happens is get very eager to play the ball and starts moving his head a lot of actually players when you see their heads falling could be a technical thing or could be a mental thing when they get ready early or they they're focusing way too early and then they get very eager and their head starts falling over in in the eagerness to play the ball so yes you start focusing but not 100 percent you start absolutely 100% concentration in roughly when you're starting your trigger movement when the ball is somewhere near his delivery stride or at or in his rather delivery stride that's the uh, that's the second thing the third thing is I've seen a lot of players who are a little hesitant in deciding whether to go on the front foot or the back foot because listen any, anything too short it's easy to decide you pick it up early right anything too full again you can see it it's comparatively easier it's that middle length right six meter seven meter length the in between length or the good length as we call it that's where the hesitation happens now this would this is what i would suggest is take a call early whether it's front foot or back foot you can make mistakes and you will make mistakes, but if you're committed, at least you don't, you're not wasting time moving your legs. So for example, a ball which you could have played off the back foot, but you already committed on the front foot, it's easier to manage it with your hands from there rather than coming to your back foot or managing from that position again. So you, you definitely will be laid there. Same with your back foot. Suddenly, You've decided that you want to play it off the back foot, but you could have gone onto the front foot rather than again trying to adjust with the footwork, try and manage. So decide early, trust yourself, don't worry, your hands will do the rest of the job even if you've got the length wrong with your footwork. Picking up length, uh, well, we keep talking about picking up length early. Now, how do you do that? There are different ways of doing it. One of the best way of doing it is obviously watching the release. 
watch the release, you get a lot of clues when you watch the release, watch the seam of uh, the ball, the release, when the ball's being released, whether it's an outswing, in swing, which side is the shine, uh, the bowler's action itself, if it's a little open chested, chances are it would be an in swinger, if it's more side on, it'll be an away swinger. So you get all these cues, so keep a very, very close eye on the release of the ball spinners whether it's an off spinner, whether it's a straighter, a googly or a leg spin, you've got to, got to look at the release of the ball, watch the seam. There are, very, uh, there are quite a few drills uh, from that perspective that you can do to just to make sure you're looking at the release of the ball. And uh, the other important thing is, is just try and figure out roughly a box, a six by six inch box, where you think the ball will be released from. Keep a very, very close eye kind of that box because that's where the ball is coming from. A lot of uh, batters nowadays bat against uh, the, the, the bowling machine. Well, if you're doing that, obviously you're seeing that release point. So make sure when you're playing a bowler as well, you kind of have this box somewhere, imaginary box, where you think the ball's going to come out from. So those are the things uh, that you've got to keep in mind in terms of picking up length early and adjusting if you have made a mistake, which you will, everyone does. Uh, then is the balance. Now, it's a very, very important thing. We keep hearing about it when, the, when you listen to commentary, he's got good balance or, you know, he needs to improve on his balance. Now, the whole idea of balance is making sure your head, which is the heaviest part of your body, is within the base. The moment your head goes outside the base, whether it's of the back foot or front foot, you will be disbalanced. Right? So making sure that box that you've created with your legs, with your footwork, your head stays within that box. The moment it goes outside the box, offside, leg side, behind, wherever, chances are your legs will move. Uh, you know, it, it has to move to get your head back into that box. So the idea is making sure your head is inside that base. So that is for balance and obviously what you also need to do is transfer of body weight. We keep talking about transfer of body weight. Now the whole idea is you can keep your body weight behind and still play with your hands but in this age of power you need every bit of power possible when you're hitting a shot. So the idea is to get your body behind. So it's very important at the point of impact your body weight goes in front if it's off the front foot. Back foot, a lot of people make this mistake of the back foot is the body weight, they take their body weight on the back foot. So moment your body weight completely goes on the back foot and especially on the heel, you'll always be under the ball, you can never get on top of the ball, right? So even though you're playing off the back foot, the intention is to keep your head in front. You still want your body flow to go in front, even though you're on the back foot, but the idea is to to make sure your body weight is still going in front. The moment your body weight goes behind and especially on the heel, you're in big trouble. You'll be in no position to play any shot. Then you're kind of fending or defending uh, and trying to protect yourself. So back foot, very important is to stay on the toe and making sure your head is always trying to go forward towards the shot, whether it's there or if it's you're cutting it, you're pulling it. You know, your, your head is always moving in front, your body weight is always trying to move in front, even though you're trying to play a shot off the back foot. Playing spin, obviously that's, that's a major thing, right? Uh, one of the most important things to play spin, again, apart from the fact that whatever your trigger movement is, and ideally speaking, very few players, they have a very exaggerated trigger movement for spin. So more often than not, it's, it's more like a front foot press front foot press and that's about it. Very few people I've seen would go back and across to spin. So generally, if you have a trigger movement, if you want a trigger movement, stick with the front foot press with the spinners or against the spinners. Now, the most important part is to see the release of the spinner. It'll give you so many clues, obviously in terms of whether the ball's turning, it's not turning, it's a straighter one, whether it's a googly or a leg spin release is imperative so you have to have to pick up uh, which way the ball will turn or might turn more often than not from the release point the seam position again is a great indicator of whether the ball's going to turn or not for example an off spinner if the seam is straight up chances are it's not going to turn it's going to go on straight with the arm 
if it's somewhere towards the fine leg, it will turn. Side spin again or undercut, if you can't see the seam nice and upright, chances are it'll fall on the leather part and it's gonna skid through and it's not gonna turn. So it's very, very important. The most important thing to play spin is to see the release and you'll get almost 80, 90%, if not 100% of the clues from the release point itself. Now you've got to have one out of these two shots to be successful against spin. One, stepping out. Two, or the other option rather, is the sweep. Let's start with the stepping out thing. Uh, you know, attacking uh, the spinner because the chances, chances are if you don't use your feet, you're not stepping out or you're not sweeping, you're stuck and playing from the crease, you're gone. Very, very little chance. Now for stepping out, the most important part is obviously to see the trajectory. And now what we've been taught and it's, it's obviously is, is foolproof to a great extent is the trajectory if you see the ball actually going higher than the release point, then you know for sure it's a fuller delivery and it's slower, it has a bigger loop, you can reach it, you can use your feet. So practice that in the nets, try and see if the ball after releasing has it gone over and above the line of the release point. So if it's gone up, try and see that more often than not, it, you will be able to reach it by using your feet and get to the pitch of the ball. So that becomes very, very important. The other important thing is, again, spin. You try and play with the spin. If you figure out it's an off spinner and it's gonna turn, it's an off spin, then chances are or it'll be a, you'll be better off trying to play it with the turn towards the onside rather than trying to play against the turn, right? That's what the bowler would want you to do. The spinner would want you to play against the turn. Same with a leg spinner. If you see it's a leg spinner, Try not to play against the turn to, towards the onside. Try and play with the turn towards the offside, unless it's a googly, obviously. If you have to play against the turn, the best shot, horizontal back shot, right? So that, that, uh, that, uh, that's how we come to the second option, which is the sweep shot. And sweep shot is so dangerous because when do you sweep? You sweep, and which deliveries do you sweep? You sweep a good length delivery, right? So you go in front, and you sweep a good length delivery. So that makes it that much more painful for the bowler because the bowler's bowled a good ball. He's hit the right area, but he's still got for, gone for runs. Now, for the sweep, there are so many things, but the most important part is obviously picking up the line and the length. That goes without saying. And then uh, the other thing is I've seen a lot of batters who are body weight stays behind. So when the body weight stays behind, and as you can see, my head is behind right now, I will never get on top of, chances are I will not get on top of the bounce. I'll always get under the bounce. And secondly, I don't have my pads on, but when I have my pads, my hands will be here, somewhere here where the pads are. So they will be restricted. The bat flow will be restricted. Now for me to have a good clean swing of the bat, I have to get my head over my front leg so I can reach the ball and have a free access to the ball with my hands, right? The moment my head is back, my hands, even though they are outstretched, will always be restricted with the pads and I'll be hitting under the ball, not over the ball. So if you're hitting in the air, a slog sweep, that's fine. Then you have to kind of keep your body weight back to get under the ball. But a good sweeper would have that ability to choose and play the shot that he would want to, whether it's slog, under or over. So for over, You've got to get your head on top of the ball or in front of your front leg, making sure the bat swing comes from up to down on top of the bounce so you can keep the ball along the ground and control your shot. Uh, for that, obviously, like I said, bat goes up and your head stays in front of the front leg so your hands have easy access to the ball. So these are things you can practice these two shots. You can have drills, you can ask somebody to chuck balls and you can sweep. Uh, obviously in the nets you try and do that, in the nets you try and see the trajectory and, 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 and use your feet and practice that. So these are things that you've got to do, at least one of them. If you have both, ha, then you're a champion player against spin for, without a question. Um, the other thing is now wrist spinners. There are a lot of wrist spinners and there, there might be days where you have not 
you're, or you're not picking the risk spinner. You can't figure out the googly. For example, Rashid Khan is a great example. It's very difficult to pick his, his googly. So uh, one of the first things that you do is you try and play everything as an incoming delivery. Because if you look at it, then you play percentage cricket. Now, what is percentage cricket? If you're playing everything that is coming into you, you're protecting your stumps, you're protecting leg before wicket, right? Uh, the only thing you still kind of might not be protecting yourself against would be the outside edge. Now, if you're playing for her leg spin or anything which is leaving you, then chances are you've exposed yourself to leg before, bold, and all uh, other sorts of uh, dismissal. So if you haven't or you're struggling to pick a bowler, a leg spinner or a wrist spinner particularly, you try and play for the ball coming into you rather than ball leaving you. Chances are if it'll turn and you're playing inside the line, you'll get beaten. Right? Now with the advent of DRS, you know, gone are the days where you could actually use your foot or your leg as a second uh, you know, uh, 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 a second source of protection or second uh, line of protection. It's all about bat. So it is very important nowadays to actually pick as much as possible from the release point, which side the ball might turn and try and play ahead of your pad, right? Ahead your, of your pad, but making sure your head is on top of the ball because the moment your head falls back and your body weight is somewhere in between or behind, chances are look at my bat face. Right? We want that bat face to be acute so that even if you don't hit it on the middle of the bat, because of the bat angle, it will not carry to silly point or short leg or slips for that matter. But the moment my body weight is back and my bat face is a lot straighter, then chances are they will carry. Right? So the idea is to get on top of the ball, keeping my bat angle acute as much as possible so that even though you don't hit it out of the middle, they don't carry. Right, the last and again a very, very important thing to play spin is you can't play spin from the crease. You can't have a small, uh, you know, stride forward or, or try and play from the crease. You can't do that. You can manage that against the quicker bowlers, but against spin, you've got to be very, very clear in what you want to do with your footwork. Either it's a good stride forward, try and reach there with your foot, the pitch of the ball, and smother the spin, or if you can't do that, making sure you use the depth of the crease. You can't possibly be caught playing from the crease because then you're gone. Against good spinners, on especially on tracks which are turning a bit, helping the spinners a bit, it'll be very difficult to manage from the crease. So either you got to decide and be very clear in front or if the pitch is slow or, or, and the ball is bowling short, back foot. Back foot, another very, very important thing. You can't be... <laughs> In Bengali, we call it Jodapa. That means, off the back foot, you can't have both your feet together. That goes both for the quick bowlers and the spinners especially. The quick bowlers, you don't have enough time. But because with spinners, you have time. I've seen a lot of international players playing off the back foot with both their feet together. Because what happens is, when you both your feet are together, you're stuck. You can't go anywhere. You can't maneuver. And especially I've seen a lot of people playing like that to off spinners and suppose a ball's turning back into you, you're stuck, you can't do anything. So it's very important for, especially against spinners, when you go on the back foot, you keep yourself an option, an exit policy, so to say, if the ball turns back into you, even though you're looking to play through the offside, but it comes back to you, you can quickly adjust. But the moment you've got both your feet together, you've got nowhere to go. So especially against spin. If you're playing off the back foot, just make sure you're a little open, you're not overtly side on, and you have space enough to adjust if it comes back into you. Power hitting, right? I mean, everyone's talking about power, hitting sixes and how far you can hit. There have even been suggestions of, you know, if somebody hits a hundred yard six, it should be eight runs, not six. So it is a very, very essential part of cricket nowadays. So it's important that you get the technique right. It's not about just brute force. It is also about technique. One of the biggest mistakes that people make while, while power hitting is opening up the body too early. Because you want to hit very hard, chances are, and we keep talking of, about it on air, you must have heard a lot of times commentators talking about losing shape. Now, what exactly is losing shape? So the idea is, if you open up early, then you're only hitting with your bottom hand. 
So what happens, look at me now, what happens if I've, I've opened my front foot, obviously I want to access the ball, I want a free path for my bat, that is fine. But if my front shoulder also opens up, right, and I'm trying to hit straight, my shoulder's already gone there. So I'm not getting any power from the front part of my body, the front portion of my body. So all I'm doing is hitting with my bottom hand. So chances of you going wrong, trying to hit with an open body like that, are massive and chances are you will slice it. You see a lot of, lot of batters slicing it, it's because they open up early and they are just slicing it with their bottom hand. And, and that's a big issue. So the idea is to keep that shape intact. And when I say shape, is you don't open up your body. Even if you've opened up your front foot for the access, uh, uh, accessing the ball, but your upper body is still closed. The moment you open that up, you're in trouble. So keep that body closed. You know, it's, it's so much like baseball. You see in a baseball batter, they don't open up when they hit those uh, huge uh, home runs. They keep it nice and side on. So what happens is then you're using your front portion of the body, your core muscle, your core muscle is kind of now, uh, it's, it's coiled right now. And at the point of impact, it opens up and it uncoils. So you're using your front portion of the body, your core, and obviously your bottom hand as well, and the, the, uh, the back side of your body or, or, or the, the latter part of your body into the shot as well. So just make sure when you're practicing power hitting, you're not opening up too early, you're closed, your upper body is specially side on, and only at the point of impact will it open up for your bottom hand and your, your, your back foot to come through or, uh, you know, so you get more power. So just make sure that you keep that shape going. As I said, even though your front foot opens up and goes towards the leg side, your upper body is still closed. It doesn't open with that front foot. And if you really, really want to hit hard, just make sure your front foot as well, it doesn't open up like that. If you want to hit it straight, that is, not on the, uh, not behind square. If you're planning to hit cow's corner, mid on, mid off, or long on, long off, you keep it closed, so your hips are closed as well. So the moment this goes up, out, your front toe, your hips open as well, they tend to open. It'll be very difficult to keep your hips closed with a toe opening like that. So if you can, keep it closed, so your hips are closed, you're still side on, and then at the point of impact, obviously you go. Again, baseball, golf. Have you seen a golfer trying to hit a long, long drive, opening up a foot like that? No, they don't. They keep it shut because they want to coil, uh, coil the core and then uncoil at the point of impact, right? So that's what happens. They want to keep it side on and, and get as much power and as much body behind the shot as possible. So the most important thing for power hitting is not losing your shape, as I mentioned, keeping it for as long as possible and then kind of unraveling it or uncoiling it at the point of impact.